made a comment on another video and I had someone who um, I'm sure you've all seen them before. Every single person who puts a comment up on a video, they've got to reply to it. And they're not the uploader, they're just someone else who's got an axe to grind. Anyway, this is a video of a, uh, a squid sort of getting boiled alive or something like that. Um, you know, some sort of a uh, Korean food joint over in Korea, South Korea. Um, and, of course, we got on the, you know, the subject of, um, you know, slaughtering and this and that. And, and I sort of said uh, to, you know, one bloke about, he asked me a question. And I said, well, you know, I've sort of been slaughtering sheep since I was 13. Anyway, this vegan comes along and tries and bombs everyone with a blooming reply. Um, and he sat there telling me that... Um, Sheep care for each other, and I thought, no, I'm going to flame and bite back at this one. And I, I gave him a good blast anyway. And, uh, you know, how dare you tell me how it is with sheep um, and all this stuff. I've spent all but a few months of my life surrounded by sheep. I know how they think. Uh, so I thought I'd do a little section on that. I'll tell you how sheep think and, and how they sort of work. Now, if you've ever heard of the characteristic sheepish, that's the best way to describe sheep that aren't tame but do want the food you've got in your hand. Um, that's where that phrase obviously come from, duh. Um, but generally speaking, with sheep, you think, well, how do they run? Well, in a nutshell, they are obsessed with food. I mean, they're flaming crazy on it. It's almost like my sister said, you know, they don't have a, a, a real solid brain or whatever. They just have a food meter And it's, you know, everything's determined by food. I mean, really, the way to a sheep's heart is food. I'm not joking. Um, that's what makes them like you. They do have sort of, shall we say, emotional instincts, um, you know, to want to look after their lamb. In some cases, now early this morning I found a scene which isn't great and I know the way it's headed and oh gosh, I don't want to take on one. I've seen people that take on a lot, but it was a lamb that had been born and the sheep had ran away. Now this isn't the case with many of the meat breeds, but with the um, wool breeds over here in Australia, known as Merino, that's one of the main wool breeds. Um, you know, that's a trouble. They they drop their lambs and they walk off, and it's especially the first-time mothers that do it. Um, yeah, there's a huge percentage of them that do it with the first-time mothers amongst the Merino breed. Um, and they're actually very good, the meat breed, um, at not doing that. But I can tell you right now with, I think it was Corridales, which is another... Uh, wool breed I have seen them give birth to a lamb walk away from the lamb because a tractor comes along with a trailer on it pouring out a bunch of wheat and they will literally walk away with the placenta still hanging out the back of them and just leave the lamb to die and never come back just because of food I've seen them quite a number of times, food's poured out, the lamb comes in to eat it, and the mother slams into its own lamb and sometimes literally knocks it on its side, you know, knocks it flat on the ground just because it wants food and it wants it, you know, and it doesn't, so it's not get, uh, allowing its lamb to have any or anything. It's flaming having it full stop, even if it's got to push its lamb right over and, you know, straight into the dirt on its side and fall right on the ground sort of thing. It doesn't give a stuff. The food's there. The sheep is primarily concerned about food over the welfare of its lamb so many times it's not funny. Um, and this happens all the time. They have um, punch-ons on occasion, which is just them button heads. It's usually the males that get into that sort of business. Um, particularly the uh, rams. We have Weathers, which is basically a 
a castrated um, ram uh, done when they're young so it doesn't cause them uh, too much pain if any um, and yeah the weathers aren't anywhere near as fiery um, as the rams because of the lack of hormones uh, due to being castrated um, but yeah you know to say sheep uh, I get sick of this with some of these pro-animal people. They sit there saying that if something's got emotion, all of a sudden it means it's got IQ. Well, you know, your dog and your cat obviously show emotion. Uh, I'm not disputing that. But it doesn't mean they're flaming as smart as you are or professor grade or any, you know, they're not really... And just by the pure fact of an animal having emotion doesn't mean it has intelligence as well. Um... And sheep, you know, they they have grumbles and, and get pissed off with each other and things like that. And some of them, you know, are enemies and then they become friends and you can see all this sort of stuff play out. Um, but it seems almost everything in their life, the linchpin is food and who's getting the most of it. And that's pretty much the linchpin of, of a lot of their actions and, and how they... Uh, sort of, you know, mentally how they run um, and how you can control them henceforth. You know, if you want them to go into a certain yard that they don't like going into when you chase them, um, then you put food in there and they'll just run straight in without a problem. Um, the other strange thing is when you got them in yards and they, they want to run around a corner, uh, it always seems that if you've got a corner, particularly a corner they can't see around, so if you've got sheet metal or something on that corner, they'll quite happily run around the corner into what they can't see as opposed to sort of, you know, running in a straight line or an end, into an area they can see. Uh, that's another strange thing. So if you have a lot of uh, curves that are covered over by sheet metal or sort of harder to see uh, in your sheep yards or just curves in general, um, they'll always want to run around them. And it'll be an easier way to hunt them up as opposed to just having everything sort of square and straight. And this has been taken into account big time by people who make up yards in kit form um, and have got to design these yards before they get welded up. Um, so they design all these things. When you see them, you go, oh, why couldn't they do it square? Well, they're deliberately not done it square because of the way sheep sort of think in regards to this got to run around the corner business if they can't see it they're going to you know run around into it sort of thing and especially if it's a curve they'll run through it but not the straight lines you know it's just it's sort of yeah it's another weird thing they do um which i can't really explain that one but but uh, it's the way it is um but yeah you know the old bar lamb it's uh the other one is fear of being caught or being chased or whatever they'll always run away when they're chased um, and that's how you, you know, get them to herd up. The other thing is if you herd up the whole mob, you'll notice there'll be one at the front and it'll be like the leader and all the others will follow behind it. And sometimes that leader will be a real mongrel of a sheep. You know, it'll turn out it's, it's the one who's the... one who causes you all the grief, that one will somehow end up being the leader at the front of the pack and it will do everything it can to lead the rest of the flock right up into the hardest, stupidest spot, and then when you finally get up in there, it doubles back on you and, and runs around you, and, you know, you can't flame and stop them because you're running through all these big rocks and they, they just outrun you. Uh, and then, bang, you, they're all back out in the paddock and you lose them all. Oh, we had one time there where one of my uncle's sheep, and he had these meat breed that were typically arrogant sods of bloody things, border lesters, um... And he had one of those, and he decided to be the leader. And flipping out, ran us three times. They went back out in the peaking. And it took us flaming, like, more than five hours to round the sods up when it used to take, like, an hour and a half. God, blimey, I'll tell you, that day, like, whew, could have strangled the bugger, but but uh, we didn't. And we put him back in my uncle's place, and then I think he jumped the fence again ten minutes later anyway. Um, but, yeah, that's that's another one is, uh, if you've ever dealt with board lesters, there's strong-headed sods of things that, blah. Oh, God, blimey. We had one come over from his place and didn't have its tail cut off and due to hygiene reasons and fly blow and, and the myth you may have been told that maggots only eat dead skin. That's the biggest lie going out there. That's one that my biology teacher used to even push. 
Maggots go for anything that's stinky. It doesn't need to be dead. Um, and due to that, that's the reason we cut the tails off. And that's also a bit to do about mulesing uh, as well. That's, that's why mulesing occurs uh, in particular breeds. Uh, but I'll do another section on mulesing another time. Um, which is a controversial issue, but I think it needs to be explained properly because there's so many lies and very little understanding of it and why it's done um, and why it actually needs to be done if you expect to have any left alive. Um, so, yeah, we clipped the tail off of this one there. It was an adult, and we thought we would have broken its spirit by chopping its tail off and put it back over the fence. The old boy Lester, like, it doesn't matter what you flame and do it's 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 arrogant as buggery that breed they'll uh, that's a meat breed uh from england they've got a big sort of a roman nose on them you can really pick them out because they're, they're just of that roman nose look they've got um, they're very strong-headed you know um and uh that's one of the traits of the board lester breed whereas the merinos are a lot shyer um but yeah that's just a few tidbits on uh on sheep and their emotions and, and how they think. And, and they can be all right as pets too. Um, you know, and they're nice little pets, but you sort of tend to realise after a while that although they're nice pets, they're not really... Fr you know, they're only being friendly with you until they get the food and then they just ignore you and eat the food. And they're sort of only doing what you want them to do and coming right up and allowing you to pat them and play around with them and all that. Just They're just doing all that just to get the food and then once they got the food they'll just sit there eating it and they'll just completely ignore you you know but um once again that's part of the food meter concept of uh sheep um but yeah that's a, a bit on uh, on sheep